The sun rises as the U-105 slices through the waters of the American coast. The happy times continue. All forward reserve torpedoes were successfully loaded into the hull of the boat. The U-105 is ready to head back into the fray once again. We are currently in grid CA-87, heading due north. I plan to stay in these deeper waters while we transit to our new patrol area just off the coast of New York City. Shipping in this area is expected to be plentiful. We have sent a whopping 50,000 tons of American shipping down to the bottom of the ocean. U-boat arm has not had such easy picking since the early years of 1940. Hello everybody, Wolfpack345 here, and welcome back aboard the U-105 as we continue our second war patrol here. We are currently sailing northward away from Cape Hatteras and heading towards the general area of New York Harbor where I plan to uh, spend this here episode and hopefully catch some nice traffic up there. We will see though. So before I really get started, I'd, I'd like to discuss something. This is actually my second go at uh, recording this here episode. Uh, the first time around, uh, my mic wasn't working the entire time. So I, I sat in front of my computer, played Silent Hunter 3 for an hour, and talked to myself, and literally just myself. <laughs> I wasn't even recording it. Uh, so I just thought that was kind of funny how things like that happen. Uh, go to classic YouTube move. I hate that. It's actually kind of frustrating. Uh, we had a good run in my, I guess, dreams is what we'll uh, call it but anyway it's okay to start back it's a good thing I do save my games but anyway I just wanted to really mention that because it's it's kind of amusing so let's go ahead and take a look at the map here so if I'm not as enthusiastic as I normally am that is wise because I'm doing this all twice but uh, obviously Silent Hunter 3 is random so uh, there is a pretty high chance that things are not going to happen exactly the same way that they did before so we're going to go ahead and pretty much hug these deep waters here as we maneuver northward towards New York Harbor. I do plan to kind of kind of go into these shallow waters here and try to find some shipping during the night. I do not want to go in here during the day if I can help it. And if I do, I will be completely submerged. But this is a, wow, just thinking about it, this is a vast stretch of water here. Uh, of just shallow water where I have no chance of evading a destroyer so it is risky if anything I'll just go ahead and head here and just straight to the mouth and see what I can find and uh, kind of head back out to sea because I don't really expect too much shipping to be this far off the coast of uh, the US but we'll, we'll see you never know but that's the current plan uh, nothing too exciting after this I do want to head more northward towards the Gulf of Maine where we have Boston and Portland Those are two major uh, US ports and there's as you can see fairly deep water here which is definitely uh, good for us and good for hunting so I think this is probably will be better hunting grounds than New York but uh, I mean we're, we're, we're coming to the United States you got to stop at New York right so that's what we're going to do um, the torpedo uh, situation I'll go ahead and go over real fast we currently have all of our forward reserves loaded into the boat itself. They're all G7As, which are the uh, steam propulsion ones. So they do leave that nasty bubble trail on the surface and give the merchant ships a pretty early warning that uh, they're about to get struck. I'll probably be using these mostly at night because obviously that makes the most sense. It kind of conceals them. and But also, at the short ranges I like to engage at, the maximum speed of these torpedoes is 44 knots. So that doesn't really give them too much warning. Uh, I do like that variable speed setting. The crew's all hunky-dory. I'm getting them sorted out. Uh, this patrol has really made me realize I need another officer with a watchman qualification because just this one guy being up here is kind of annoying. See, look, if I switch this guy and put him up here, the efficiency b jar drops about a third. So uh, it's not very good, especially when we don't have radar or anything like that. Uh, the bridge crew needs to be in tip-top shape. So, with all that out of the way, I think... Oh, one more thing uh, to conclude my ramble. I will be uploading this video in 4K resolution. I'll be upscaling it in my, uh, my editing software to 4K. I don't actually own a 4K monitor, so this is the way I have to do it. Um, in the few tests that I did, 
it greatly improved visibility of ships at nighttime. Uh, because whenever you look, I look through my binoculars uh, in the YouTube video, it's really just, excuse me, it's really just a smudge on the horizon. And you can kind of see fire or whatever, especially in deck gun attacks at long range. It looks terrible. And it's really frustrating because in my video itself, on my computer that I finished rendering, it looks fine. You're pretty much seeing exactly what I'm seeing. But YouTube compresses it and makes it look like just hot trash. So uh, doing 4K is kind of a way to trick YouTube, I think. Uh, it seems to work. It's not perfect. It's still not, it's nowhere near perfect, but it is better. And uh, so I will be doing that. It is a little more time consuming. I'm hoping to get this video out on time. We'll see if I uh, end up doing that. But that was just my last comment. Uh, it's really just a way to kind of trick YouTube, essentially, into uh, not compressing my videos down as much. Because larger videos get a uh, higher priority, I guess is the best way to go to say that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's, that's really all there is to it. So anyway, with that out of the way, I'm going to continue northward and uh, see if we can find ourselves some ships. Uh-oh, we have a destroyer heading north northwest, speed medium. Uh, and it's kinda it's kinda going straight for us. That is very concerning. Schiff gesichtet, Lage 1, 3, 8, große it's, Entfernung. It's so concerning, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at it. <laughs> One three eight degrees. Yeah, that's definitely a destroyer way out there. Uh it doesn't really look like he has a beat on us, but we're gonna go ahead and go down to let's just go down to yeah, Periscope Death going. now. I'm not too thinking. worried about it. He's pretty far out, so uh, I'm not terrified. Terrified just yet. Uh, let's go ahead and submerge. Maybe we can get a shot off and sink another American destroyer. That would definitely uh, cause some issues, don't you think? Alright, and let's get our good. Now that we're underwater, we need to switch out. Put our good sonar operator on the hydro in the hydrophone station. And put you in there as well. Perfect. Let's take a listen. Let's go ahead and increase the volume just a bit. Here we go. Oh, he does sound like he's going kind of fast. That's concerning. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and I'll head slow. Very fast closing, bearing 070. Are there two of them? Of course there's two of them. Zero, seven, two. Let's take a look. Thankfully... Okay, there's, there's a big boy right there. I don't see anything else. Nothing else out there. Okay, oh, I see it. It's right behind it. It's just following him. Yeah, that's scary. That uh, is very scary. Well, we're probably just going to submerge the boat then in that case, because that is not... Yeah. Of course, I plotted my, my boat to go right near it. Let's go ahead and just kind of turn around here. <laughs> Uh, I'm contemplating taking a shot at one of these, mostly because it would be fun. Looks like a Fletcher. That one is a Fletcher right there, and that might be something different. Let's go ahead and lower our scope a little bit. Alright, let's uh, work for silent running. Schleifer. What is that? I'm probably I'm not going to shoot at these guys. I'm just going to watch them as they sail by because American destroyers are just some beautifully made ships. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm a little biased. Just a little bit. Let's take a look here. Uh, single stack destroyer, rounded turrets, 
Somers class? Hmm, possible. I don't think it's any of these. Two turrets, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably it. Nope. No, it's not. Because uh, this one only has one rear turret, and this one has two. Could be a British destroyer. I have no idea. Maybe it is a Somers class, and this one just happens to have uh, two turrets. But <sighs> hell, if I know. And that's all. That's a Fletcher. I do know that. Because it looks like there is a spot for another turret right here. It's just uh, this little picture doesn't have it. It is possible. Or it could just be a British destroyer. I believe they're sailing right past me without a care in the world. Nope, it's an American destroyer. Two turrets? Yeah, man, I don't... This one has quite a few torpedo launchers. Looks like one before the stack, yeah. One after and probably one here. This picture's not perfect, but I think this is a Somers class. Yeah, because it also has these weird superstructure uh, things going on here like this so yeah I think so let's take a look at them <laughs> out here that's a pretty cool looking camouflage ah oh. you're lucky I'm not gonna sink you and then we have obviously the Fletcher here uh, obviously the game is not using historical dates for a lot of these ships but that's okay. We'll take what we can get. Anyway, that's pretty sweet though. So, look at those double turrets as well. It's beefy. Alright, we'll quit admiring the enemy warships. <laughs> and uh, we'll just sail along. Thankfully they didn't actually pick us up. Because that would have been dangerous. Especially that Fletcher with all those K-throwers and everything like that. We're we're just gonna go ahead and sail away while they all, they sail uh, northwest. So, uh, and then we'll continue on our course once ever we have broken off contact with them. That was quite exciting. That was actually kind of cool. Anyway, we'll continue onward, and I'll update you guys whenever something else happens, as you would expect. We've spotted a ship. We're currently way out here near New York Harbor. I'm kind of in a little shallow water, but. We spotted a, a little ship. Let's go ahead and yeah, take a look at it here. Yeah, yeah, I need a little with that. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, 301. Where are you? There we go. It looks like kind of a small little coastal freighter. Honestly, it looks like deck gun meat to me. We have 34 rounds, so that should be plenty to uh, take care of this little ship here. Uh, let's go ahead and all head full, please. And we'll go ahead and close the gap. This is actually already different than my first, uh, my first, uh, take, so I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm glad it's not the same exact stuff happening over again, so I'm happy, I'm good. Uh, it's fresh and new, so we're fine. Take a nice drink, you know, professional. Actually, I'm actually going to drink uh, a little something from my, my U505 mug, which I have. All right. <laughs> uh, what to say? What to say? Yeah, it looks like it is a fairly small ship. It probably maybe a little tramp steamer or even the the coastal vessel thing uh, on here. I haven't detected any other ships uh, in the meantime since we encountered those two American warships sailing northwest or northeast, something like that. Let's see. Uh, single stack center. It looks like mast funnel mast see here small freighter yeah I think that might be it right there 2,000 tons 
So relatively small. Yeah, that should be plenty with uh, our deck gun rounds. Uh, does it have a gun though? It does want to make things a little a little hot if it does have a gun. I do not see a gun, but I could be mistaken. It might have a gun. <laughs> uh, we'll find out very shortly. Stay tuned, folks. All right, let's go ahead and close in here. Let's see how close are we? Six thousand two hundred meters. It's not zigzagging. I'm surprised it hasn't spotted us. Are they all asleep? Could be neutral. It's not. It doesn't have lights. It's not making itself. Uh, it's not announcing itself as neutral. It's not doing anything to indicate that it's neutral. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do what I do best: shoot first, ask questions later. That's what I always say. All right, go ahead and give me a range. Just going to slow down, make this boat a halfway decent gun platform. All right, 4,400 meters is what they say. We'll increase that a little bit and fire. There we go. Thankfully, the seas are silky smooth, so it makes this uh, the U-boat a decent gun platform. Looks like we were just shy. I should have gone with what they told me, but. Oh, it does have a gun. That answered my first question. Looks like we overshot it. And hopefully that's our first shot. Miss. Fiddlesticks. <clears throat> Come on now. What is his range? 4,100 meters? I've already lot wasted like what, four rounds? Did I shoot? Oh man, ranging this guy is actually being kind of a, a pain in the butt. Okay, that was short, just up a little bit. And he is just throwing shells downrange extremely quickly. There we go. Finally, my goodness. Oh, that one hit seemed pretty critical right there. Quite a few secondaries and a big, big old fire started on the deck. Unfortunately, fires don't actually do damage in the game. Although, there is a mod for that. I do not have that mod enabled, however. Uh, but there are times where I wish that mod was enabled. Mostly because, I mean, fires are very dangerous on a ship, as I'm sure most of you do know. But I feel like the game's easy enough as it is, with deck gun attacks especially, that I don't need the extra help. Um, looks like I'm keep overshooting. I had it ranged perfectly yeah, earlier. Give me a... There we go. That was a hit. That gives us three hits. Probably won't need too much more, especially after seeing that that passenger cargo take only two deck gun shells and that that pretty intense deck gun duel I had a little while ago. Uh, I don't think a small ship like this would need too much motivation. There's shells whizzing by us. There we go. She's going down. All right, let's go ahead and bring our gun forward. Bring uh, the watch crew on deck, please. This guy really needs to sleep, but I'm gonna pretty much push him to near death since he's our only officer which a wa with a watchman qualification that makes him very valuable and pretty much necessary because I think I went over this though oh there we go that is oh that's another ship going down right there Well, we'll continue on our course here. That add, that makes our total what? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Counting the sloop I shot with my 3.7. That'll do it for that. So we'll keep going underway. That ship is already going down relatively fast. So we'll keep sailing around. We'll go ahead standard as well. I do want to stick in these deeper waters. Especially now, because uh, if any warships are in the area, they're bound to come and investigate this here sinking. So, 
Anyway, uh, we'll cut here and get back to you guys, uh, as always, when something interesting happens. Brief update on the weather. As you can see, it is now raining and overcast. It seems like we just sailed straight into a squall here. Uh, no one has even had time to put on their rain jackets just yet. Let's go ahead and check the actual yeah, weather yeah, conditions yeah, here. Overcast, precipitation medium, fog heavy, speed, wind speed 7 meters per second, direction 310. So hopefully this rain lets up soon because unfortunately our visibility is severely limited in, this, in these types of conditions. We could probably only see what, maybe half a kilometer out? Uh, yeah not not very far so that does make it difficult to hunt but at least the waves aren't extremely choppy it's just rain right now hopefully it'll pass soon and but we'll keep moving onward um we'll see what else we can find in this area Air spotted right in front of us ah! fuck crash dive <laughs> Oh my god. That is terrifying. Get under, get under, get under. Oh, there's two of them. There's two of them. Oh shit. Uh, give me depth on their kill fast. A thousand meters, perfect. Make my depth one four zero now. Oh my god, that thing just my my chief just screamed. Ship spotted, and then I heard shells whizzing right overhead, and I almost shit my pants. There we go, Aztecs. Or I guess since they're American ships, uh, sonar. All right, we're going to just haul ass down here. Uh, get man your stations, boys. Let's go ahead and go to sleep. Nice. This does not look good for us. It's like another one of those Somers class destroyers. And a Clemson. Ah, oh, the good old Clemson. Not too worried about the Clemson. Although it is going right over us. Cross your fingers. Hard to starboard. Or port, I'm sorry. What the hell was that? Did they ram each other? Maybe that was this, I guess, depth charge is going off. That was weird. Alright, well anyway... Okay, what, one at, are there more than just two? No, we're just picking up the two. All right, rudder zero. All right, let's slow down. Let's go down to 160 meters and we're gonna try to run. I guess we're pretty much in as deep. The water's over a thousand meters, so I'm not too worried actually. I don't need to really run for any pockets or anything like that. I just need to kind of play it safe now. Let's go ahead and rig for silent running. Uh, man, that was unexpected, I'm gonna be honest. That <laughs> scared the bejesus out of me. You know, that always tends to happen whenever I get into uh, really rough weather. Uh, destroyers just seem to pop out of the fog and right near me. I, I wonder if they were equipped with radar and they were able to home in on us. If so, that's a scary, uh, scary thought. That's what the future is gonna be full of. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well, looks like we're leveling out close to 160 meters here. Hopefully their eggs don't land on us. But of course, if they do, I will get right back to you guys. 
See you soon. Okay, so they seem to have given up. It's been quite a while now. Uh, it's about, it's a little past noon. It's about 12, yeah, around 12.40. So, seems like they finally have given up. We're coming up, we'll come up to 80 meters. Merchant closing, moving fast. Interesting. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and turn north then. <laughs> turn towards, uh, it looks like that ship. I don't know if we'll be able to catch it. I don't really want to risk it. Let's go to periscope depth. It is possible. Let's go ahead and draw a rough course here. Something like that. Actually, I think we probably will. We just need to move a little faster. All head standard. Those ashores are long gone. I'm not too worried about them. We're going to have to get nice and close here due to the current weather conditions. There's not going to be a chance in hell for me to 3 minute 15 this guy, so I'll probably have to use the Uyagd to get his speed here. Let's see if I can... It should be... Should be close enough here. They said it was moving fast, so luckily I was able to kind of intercept it. Let's go ahead and see. It's at about zero five five degrees. Yeah, <laughs> kind of what I expected. No visual contact. Let's take a listen. Yeah, it's definitely hauling ass. Uh, oh. We'll just have to get super close here. Okay, apparently it's in visual. Zero, five, zero. Perfect, there we go. Oh, it looks like uh, it says it's a tanker, so it's definitely one of the smaller tankers. And those shores are right nearby. They're gonna come right back here after I sink this fella. Uh, well. If I sink it, if I hit it, I guess that's a, a big if on my end. Let's see here. Oh, it's going to be farther back. It's a smaller ship. But it is a tanker, so it might be towards the front. It's a Colt ship. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be any of this junk. Oh, uh, it's not that, definitely. There we go. Intermediate tanker. So looks like we have that middle superstructure, mast in the front, mast with the flag, and uh, K mast in the back. Perfect. That is definitely it. 3,480 tons. So that's actually a fairly large tanker. Wow. For its size, it looks very small. Length 78 meters. So perfect. And let's see. Maximum speed is 12 knots. So that probably can't be going faster than 12. Good. And depth is, or draft is 6.9 meters, so that should be fine. We're gonna have to get nice and close here. Let's go ahead and come to slow speed. And let's go ahead and set up. Let's see what course do we think this guy's heading on. Currently heading About one two zero. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Neuer Kurs zwei zwei. Rudder and midships. All right, let's get a weapons officer in here. All right, so we are pretty close. I'm tempted to use two torpedoes on this guy, mostly because of the sea state. Two torpedoes. I don't. 3,000 ton ship. We'll use one. One torpedo. We'll use impact pistol. Let's see, four meters impact speed fast because it is a G7A. We'll go and go ahead and just set speed to 12 knots. That is definitely a uh, placeholder. Let's see, we established his course was 120, right? 120. Current AOB is 50 degrees. Set. Range. Range is very close. 600 meters. Set. Alright, let's go ahead and use the Uyagd. 
I have a feeling he's going full out 12 knots. Start timer. And get ready to stop here. We're going to use this inner green ring here to establish speed. Stop. 10 knots. Okay. Why not? I have a feeling it's going a little faster, but we'll do we'll do ten and a half. Okay, open tube one. This is going to be fast. All right, and we need to fire now. Tube one rolls. Let's check that. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be close. He's just out of arming, <laughs> just out of arming range. It looks like it's going to hit F. There we go. It's a good thing I adjusted it. I think he was going closer to 11 knots. But I hit him right aft, smack aft. Right in the engine room, so that's definitely going to cause some issues. I feel like. <laughs> Looks like his prop is spinning a little slower. I don't know if that's enough to put this ship down because... Uh, it is... 3,000 tons is nothing to scoff at. Let's see, she is listening pretty heavily. Ooh, yeah. I feel like so. Maybe it's just the way she's bouncing around in the waves. Well, let's go ahead and follow her. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think the ship is definitely taking on water and uh, listing pretty heavily to the aft. So we'll go ahead and follow it, stalk it, and see if she ends up going down. I have a feeling it might be okay. <laughs> Well, we'll see. It might just take some time. Patience is key here. Unfortunately, we won't be able to use... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. And these waves are not going to help her out either. So, I think we just need to wait her out, essentially, and she'll go down. Uh, we obviously can't use the deck gun in these seas, so... And I don't really want to waste another torpedo. But if I do have to, I will. Uh, let's just hope she kind of goes down. I have a feeling she will. The waves are already starting to lap over the deck, so I think... It's just a waiting game here. Okay, we got the official confirmation she is going down. As you can see, the entire aft of the boat is completely submerged. And it looks like she's just tipping tipping back. So that's kind of what you would expect. We did hit. You can see where our torpedo hit the ship. Yep, and she's going down. So one intermediate tanker to add to our list. We're up to what? 11 ships? Something absurd. <laughs> I think it's 11 if you count the sloop that we uh, we shot at, but anyway, overall, pretty good, I, I would say. So we'll go ahead and watch her go down, and we're going to try to vacate the area here relatively quickly. Mostly because of those two destroyers. I'm sure they are on their way to pick up any survivors and also to hunt and try to sink us. I'm sure we're causing a lot of problems for the U.S. Navy. And the water's pretty deep here, so yeah, she's going to go straight down all the way to the bottom. Alright, well, that was a fairly successful attack. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and just head... Yeah, we'll stay... We'll head east. That seems fine by me. And we can go ahead and secure from silent running. And reload our torpedo while we're underwater. Sea state too harsh. Oh, so, okay, this is a interesting feature. So... Because the boat is kind of bouncing around down here uh, with all these rough waves, we have to go to below 25 meters to actually reload torpedoes, which is a very nice thing. So let's go ahead and go down to 40 meters and reload that torpedo. And as you can see, now that we are at a depth where the boat isn't rocking around as much, we can start reloading that bad boy, which is actually awesome. I love this feature, and the, the mod that does this is the hard-coded fixes, in case you were curious. It's the same mod that makes it so you can't reload externals while going flank speed, or uh, and you have to secure it before you crash dive. So overall, a fairly cool mod. Uh, let's see what's next. Okay, so I think 11 ships was the small freighter and we're up to 12. I just have terrible memory and that's really what it, what it is. Uh, but that torpedo is pretty much loaded. Uh, let's take a quick listen on the hydrophones. See if those destroyers are coming for us. We'll probably stay submerged for a while, we'll see. But I'm thinking of wrapping up the episode here. Yep, I think that'll do it for this episode, so... 
Uh, let's see, that torpedo has 27 seconds left. I would just like to thank you guys for watching as always as we go ahead and get that torpedo loaded. We'll hang out down here at, you know, 40 meters, keeping an, uh, keeping an ear <laughs> on the hydrophone and uh, making sure those shores don't come back and try to sink us. And then uh, we'll surface the boat and meander around a little bit. Uh, so we'll be patrolling in this area in the next episode. And until then, thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack 345. Thank you, sir. Torpedoes loaded. This is Wolfpack 345 signing off, and I'll see you guys on the next one.